Howdy Longhorns! This week we've been learning about goods and services. We've also talked about consumers and producers. Today we're going to read a book called Ox Cart Man by Donald Hall. In this story, see if you can see who is a consumer and who is a producer. In October, he backed his ox into his cart and he and his family filled it up with everything they made or grew all year long that was left over. He packed a bag of wool. He sheared from the sheep in April. He packed a shawl his wife wove on a loom from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. He packed five pairs of mittens his daughter knit from yarn spun at the spinning wheel from sheep sheared in April. So he's packing up the wool. He packed candles the family made. He packed linen made from flax they grew. He packed shingles he split himself. He packed birch brooms his son carved with a borrowed kitchen knife. So in this picture, he's loading up his wagon with all of the things his family has made. He packed potatoes they dug from their garden, but first he counted out potatoes enough to eat all winter and potatoes for seed next spring. He packed a barrel of apples, honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages, a wooden box of maple sugar from the maples they tapped in March. When they boiled and boiled and boiled the sap away, he packed a bag of goose feathers that his children collected from the backyard geese. Sure is packing a lot. I wonder where he's taking these things. When his cart was full, he waved goodbye to his wife, his daughter, and his son, and he walked at his ox's head ten days. See, he's walking, the ox and him are on the path. Seems like they're heading to town. Over the hills, through the valleys, by streams, past farms and villages, until he came to Portsmouth, Portsmouth Market. A market is where you buy and sell things. He sold the bag of wool. He sold the shawl his wife had made. He sold five pairs of mittens. He sold candles and shingles. He sold birch brooms. He sold potatoes. He sold apples. He sold honey and honeycombs, turnips and cabbages. He sold maple sugar. He sold a bag of goose feathers. Look at all the people buying his items. When he sells those items, what is he? Is he a consumer or is he a producer? Is he providing a service? Is he selling goods? Think about that. Turn and share with a partner. All right, if you said that he's selling goods, you are correct. He is providing a service by selling something to the people of that town. Those people in the town probably don't have all of those things. They don't have the farmland that he has back home. Let's keep reading. Then he sold the wooden box he carried the maple sugar in. Then he sold the barrel he carried the apples in. Then he sold the bag he carried the potatoes in. Then he sold his ox cart. What does he have left to sell? Anything? Aww. Then he sold his ox and kissed him goodbye on his nose. He had been a really good ox. That must be really hard for him to do. Then he sold his ox's yoke and harness. With his pockets full of coins, he walked through Portsmouth Market. He bought an iron kettle to hang over the fire at home. And for his daughter, he bought an embroidery needle that came from a boat in the harbor that had sailed all the way from England. And for a son, he bought a Barlow knife for carving birch brooms with, and for the whole family, he bought two pounds of wintergreen peppermint candies. So first he was a producer, and now he is what? Who can raise their hand and answer that question? 
I think I heard somebody say a consumer. You are right. Then he walked home with a needle and the knife and the wintergreen peppermint candies tucked into the kettle and a stick over his shoulder stuck through the kettle's handle and coins still in his pockets. Past farms and villages, over hills, through valleys, by streams, until he came to his farm, and his son, his daughter, and his wife were waiting for him. I wonder if they knew what he was bringing back home. And his daughter took her needle and began stitching, and his son took his barlow knife and started whittling, and they cooked dinner in their new kettle. And afterward, everyone ate a winter green peppermint candy, and that night the ox cart man sat in front of his fire stitching a new harness for the young ox in the barn. And he carved a new yoke and sawed planks for a new cart and split shingles all winter. While his wife made flax into linen all winter and his daughter embroidered linen all winter and his son carved Indian brooms from birch all winter and everybody made candles. And in March they tapped the sugar maple trees and boiled the sap down. And in April they sheared the sheep, spun yarn, and wove and knitted. <laughs> Look at those little sheep. And in May they planted potatoes, turnips, and cabbages, while apple blossoms bloomed and fell, while bees woke up, started making new honey. And geese squawked in the barnyard, dropping feathers as soft as clouds. What do you think would happen next? Do you think that they are going to keep these things forever? What do you think? Turn and share with a partner, and I sure hope you enjoyed this story today. Thanks for listening.